Within previous videos, we already talked about how you can create a multi-agent GPT applications or even with non-GPT models to collaboratively come and have all these agents work together to respond your complex queries and tasks or questions. Now, in this video, we're going to see how we can achieve the same thing, but this time without coding using a low-code solution called Autogen Studio. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone to Autogen, this time studio. So what is Autogen? Well, we have created multiple videos of what is Autogen, Autogen part one, two, three. I will actually add the playlist of Autogen in the video description. So Autogen is an open source library developed by Microsoft Research to let you create multi-agent application with these language models. For example, you have one language model that is skillfully generating codes, the other one images. You can connect your own data, own database, own PDF files, one with connecting to the search engine on internet. So think about having these all these agents they can be GPD models, non-GPD models, collaboratively work together to resolve complex tax for you. And if you want to really get into the deep of coding and how you can get to know Autogen and execute that on your side, make sure you watch that playlist I add in the video description. But today we're going to see how we can get those capabilities without coding or low code using Autogen Studio, which is a recent great update by Autogen. So I'm going to go through Autogen Studio and uh, cover a couple of examples. You will see how I will create an application that I type asking me about recent stock prices and visualize it for me. It's pretty cool. So before doing so, let me show you how you can install and I will add the documentation of Autogen Studio to the Discord channel on the reference section. So click on the Discord channel link in video description. You will get access to that. Okay, so let me get into my terminal. This is my terminal. The first thing that you need to do just pip install Autogen. So I have already done that. And by the way, don't install Autogen, Autogen Studio. That's the recent update. I'm not going to do it again because I already did. And I would recommend you install this under a Conda environment if you don't want to deal with those Python packages discrepancy stuff. That's the recommended way to go. Or you can just here hit pip install Autogen Studio. I'm not going to do that because I already did. The second thing that you need to do is putting your OpenAI key if you want to use OpenAI for accessing your models, right? So how you can do that, we just simply say OpenAI API key and put your API key here. Again, I did it before. That's also credential. So I'm not going to do it again. And you're done. Now you can launch Autogen Studio with this command line. There you go. So I would say launch Autogen, Autogen Studio with the port 881, which is my local server. So I hit enter. Let's wait for a couple of seconds and you will see that it will tell me the URL that Autogen Studio is running. All right, here we are. It is running on this local URL. So let me click. And there you go. That's my Autogen Studio. So it's still in beta. You might see some changes coming in and you can also log in with the user. But I want to provide you walk through on all these capabilities here and then launch some demos here. So let's start. We have three tabs here, and the first one is build. So let's click on build, which is already VR. And let's see what are these left tabs under build. So the first one is skills. As you can see here, the skills are functions that can let your large language model equip with the answer of these functions. For example, if you want to generate images, or if you want to have an agent that is a skill with generating images, here is a function for that. So let's see how that do does the work. So it has a function in Python, and you will see it is using dull E to generate images. So in your multi-agent application, as soon as there is a need for generating an, an image, this function will be triggered. Or if you want to, for example, find papers for this specific source, if you have a function, it actually, you don't need to call an LLM or something to define a function. Your function can be anything. It can be a math function. It can be a function to call an API, like, for example, we are calling the data from the source. It can be a function to query internet. Any task, think about it like a plugin that you're defining to connect to different sources. 
so these are the default ones that come with origin studio but you can always add yours so you need to explain first of all what is this skill and then write down your code as needed so what is the second tab models this is the section that you'll use the models and as you can see you not only can use azure openai or openai but also you can use local language models so you can have the multi-agent application without even touching gpt or openai so if you have let's say this model in your local machine i can run it and this endpoint will be a local endpoint on my machine so i can paste it here and i can use it in my llm application so this is amazing and for gpt4 i'm using openai and make sure you put your key here so i've done those so and let's go to the third tab agents this is the agent that we are going to define which on backend are some models that are equipped with some skills so we have primarily two user uh, agents here the first one is user it is technically me that are going to ask questions provide feedbacks it's going to be my server that execute the codes so that's why uh, when I have this user proxy agent defined this is going to be the one that executed the code so it's on my side there is no LLM or GPT-4 that's why in the model section there's nothing there's no skills also needed you can put system message here uh, change the setting here but this is the name and the description what is the primary assistant this is the one actually is a model it's a agent so what model here you can see I can use multiple models but always the default one will be chosen first so GPT-4 will be the primary model for this so what does it do this is the message for this assistant I'm not going to change it because uh, it's it's the default for Autogen Studio and of course when I want to call this assistant or this assistant will get triggered I want to equip that assistant with some skills so I want to make sure that assistant can generate images and find papers for example from that source so remember these are coming from the skills section we defined before I can add even further I have just three skills defined here you have to define more and you can select it from here so I click on OK and if you want to create more agents of course you can do so to find what model gonna be used, what are skills, and provide your system message. And lastly, workflow. When I have some agents that use some models plus some skills, then I can call them in a workflow. How? Let's say I wanna have a workflow that does visualization. This is the one we're gonna actually run it. So let's click on that. You give it a name, description, and if you want to, you can have the summary method too. And there you go, you just need to define, okay, what agents are sender and receiver for this workflow the senders of course is me the user proxy that's why I have chosen user proxy define on the agent tab and the receiver is gonna be the visualization assistant the one that agent I just showed you which is again equipped with generating images fetching profiles you can even add more I don't think I need actual fetch profile I can remove but it's okay I click on okay and that's it we have travel agent general agent workflow and you can create more workflow with group chat or two agents these are just two agents so these are again defaults for origin studio now we have covered built what is playground playground is the place i can actually define my workflow let's create a new workflow and actually let's delete my previous one so i can show you how it did so click on new remember we have three workflows right let's say i want to use the visualization agent one i click on create here are some samples by Origin Studio. Let's say I want to ask this uh, workflow that, hey, pull out the chart of NVIDIA and Tesla stock price for 2023. Save the results to a file name, NVIDIA, Tesla, PNG, whatever. Okay. So there are multiple tasks involved. You need to connect to the source of the data, get the updated data, run a file, generate a Python code that fetch this data and generate an image and save it locally. So think about all this process that needs multiple agents. And we know that what agent is gonna be used because of the workflow we just show you. And then it finally show me the results. So let's wait a bit and see how it works. There you go, the answer is here. You can see all the messages by agent, not only here, also from your terminal, you can see what's going on in the back end, what assistant are triggered, what the skills are triggered. This is pretty cool actually. But even here, you can see that the user says this question, which is me, and then the assistant, which is a visualization one, it's gonna figure out, oh, okay, I need to fetch the data, create a launch, blah, 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 blah. And based on all these steps needed, it, it realized that, oh, I need to do some pip install. So it did it all on my machine. It generated the code and then executed the code on user proxy, which is my machine again. And all the way, finally, it saved me the this file, which is now saved on my local machine. It, it is amazing. 
without me doing anything, this is generated for me. So it didn't use Dolly because Dolly generate images by itself, but I wanted to get fetch some stock data and plot it. So the generate image skill was not being used for this task, right? And of course it gave me the Python code too that generated this. But now I want to ask a question that it will trigger the generate image skill which is going to use Dolly. So I want to see if that functionality of also work in this workflow or not. So here's another question. I want to say paint a picture of a glass, blah, blah, blah. So that's an imaginary image. And based on the question, it should automatically understand, oh, that's the time I need to use the Dolly function, which was a skill defined to generate this image. So let's see if that works or it will do a mistake and generate a Python code with some other messy stuff. So I, I ask a question that flow is using in a skill that is totally different than the previous question. Let's see how it's gonna work. There you go. It's actually a very beautiful picture. I love it. It it gave me good good vibes really. So let's see how it actually developed this image and it installed some packages and there you go. It generated the query for me and then it is calling that scale which we defined before that one that used dolly so it ended up knowing that okay i need to use that scale and that's how it generated this image which is perfect and now if you're happy with it you can publish this and if you publish it it will go to the gallery which i haven't published anything it's empty all right so that was a quick walkthrough on autogen studio that's a very recent thing when i came across that it makes so much easy to first understand what is multi-agent and what is autogen and when you become comfortable with all this process if you want to have even further flexibility you can go to the backend process and code all of this stuff which we have fully explained in seven parts of autogen video series which i have added that to the video description let me know what you think in the comment section and if you like this tutorial make sure you like and also subscribe and i appreciate it thank you so much and until next video we'll see you shortly losers let it happen but winners make it happen Losers see thunderstorms, winners see rainbows. Losers see icy streets, winners put on the icy skates. Losers take a choice, but winners make a choice. So you do become what you think. Dream big, my friends, believe in yourself and take action. Till next video, take a good care.